Hello, welcome. Thank you for joining us on this edition of News 2. Happy Columbus Day and Virgin Islands Puerto Rico friendship. Topping our newscast for many, it was a holiday. The VI government, schools, post office and courts were closed. Innovative business offices were open. It was certainly an eventful weekend for Virgin Islanders across the territory and one of the reasons is, of course, because of the celebration of the friendship between the Virgin Islands and Puerto Rico. Many events were held both on St. Thomas and St. Croix, including a major ceremony led by the Senate. News 2's April Knight has more. Multiple celebrations lit up the territory over the weekend in recognition of Virgin Islands Puerto Rico Friendship Day. On St. Thomas, the 31st legislature spearheaded a big program at the Reichhold Center, highlighting the cultural ties between the two territories. Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands have had a very close relationship over the years, and then as of late, we kind of sort of went by the wayside with our friendships. And so Senator Jackson, the rest of the legislature, and myself, we're working very hard to uh, basically bring this friendship back together with our counterparts in government. VI Puerto Rico Friendship Day celebrations fall on the tail end of Hispanic Heritage Month, recognized from mid-September to mid-October. This year, our focus is on dance because dance is an activity that promotes an understanding among human beings and fosters respect for different ways of life. Through our folkloric dances, we preserve and share our culture. The St. Thomas ceremony featured the Guateque Puerto Rico Folkloric Ballet Company. There were traditional dances, including Minue, Rigodon, and Contradanza. They also featured ballroom dances from the 19th century, all highlighting an intricate cultural exchange. The program also depicted a marriage ceremony done in the Puerto Rican countryside. <laughs> It was a colorful event, worthy of the long, colorful, shared history between Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands. Reporting for News 2, I'm April Knight. And be sure to tune in to News 2 tomorrow, Tuesday. We'll have a whole lot more on Virgin Islands Puerto Rico Friendship Day events on St. Croix, including the Big Parade and Fun Day. The Jovenza trial continues, and according to Jovenza documents filed in court, five individuals and entities in total received large pay payouts from the company. These include General Manager Sloan Scheuer, who received more than $600,000, Franklin Quao, Chief Legal Officer, who received $500,000, $61,000, and controller Timothy Carlson, who received a little over half a million dollars. Hess Corp. also received a payout of $389,000, while Hess Oil Virgin Islands Corp. received $480,000. We will keep you updated on the Jovenza trial. Governor Kenneth Mapp again handed down some actions on bills forwarded by the Senate, but perhaps the most significant one was Bill Number 31-0190, which would fund the operations of the government of the Virgin Islands for the next fiscal year. According to the governor, the funds include appropriations that would increase the Virgin Islands' workforce. Like he promised, News 2's April Knight has details. Sandy, even though it doesn't look like it's going to happen within the year that he promised during his campaign, Governor Kenneth Mapp said the Virgin Islands is on its way to hiring 1,000 new government employees. This was according to Governor Mapp, who made the statement in a press release Friday detailing the approval of Bill No. 30-0190, now Act 7758, which funds the operations of the Government of the Virgin Islands for fiscal year 2016. The Act appropriates over $700,000 for the VI Police Department that could help hire at least 125 new police officers, some $5 million in additional funding for 
for the Department of Education would also hire some 150 teachers and support staff. The VI Fire Services, which has been in the spotlight recently because of complaints from firefighters about personnel being stretched too thin, is getting an additional $2 million to hire fresh blood. The Bureau of Corrections will also get an added $1.9 million to hire more correction officers and support staff. According to the MAP administration, they're readying the launch of a major ad campaign advertising the many job vacancies. The governor said they're also planning to move the contract and per diem employees in the territory's hospitals onto government payroll. And not only will news of the job vacancies spread across the territory, Governor Mapp said they're also targeting VI communities in the U.S. mainland. Reporting for News 2, I'm April Knight. The act also includes half a million dollars toward the VI Public Department of Public Works, which would help expand the Vitran bus services throughout the weekend. Meanwhile, the act requiring the Commissioner of the Virgin Islands Department of Public Works to provide that Vitran bus service on weekends and holidays was approved, as we just mentioned, by the legislative body and forwarded to the governor for further consideration. The bill was signed into law by Governor Mapp. Senator Marvin Blyden, the sponsor of that bill, said his office was inundated with phone calls from concerned residents about bus service not being provided on weekends and holidays, a much-anticipated measure that many appreciate. And that surely impacts our senior population, he says as well. The weekend and holiday schedules may be different from those from Monday through Friday. Nevertheless, Vitran will provide the service to the public. In other news, last week, we reported the Senate Rules Committee approval of the nomination of Claude Walker for the Attorney General position. Other nominations were also acted upon by the Rules Committee. The committee also approved the nomination of Attorney Henry Smock, for another term as a member of the University of the Virgin Islands Board of Trustees, Smock has served on the board for 15 years. It also approved St. Thomas businessman Harith Wickramer as a member of the VI Port Authority Board of Go Governors. The committee held the nomination of St. Thomas entrepreneur Bagwandin Prasad for the VI Waste Management Authority's governing board, pending some clarifications. Well, it was a scare, but thanks to many, 65-year-old St. Thomas resident Karen Andrews was found. Andrews, who has Alzheimer's disease, was reported by VIPD as a missing, vulnerable adult and was last seen on, at 9 p.m. on Thursday, October 8th, in the area of Bonnets France. Search teams broken into five groups led by officers with the Virgin Islands Police Department, consisting of recruits from the VIPD Academy and members of St. Thomas Rescue. They began a coordinated search for Miss Andrews Friday afternoon, lasting into the late evening. The search teams reconvened on Saturday at 10 a.m., 7 a.m., rather, covering a perimeter from where she was last seen. At 10.34 a.m. Saturday, October 10th, search teams found her in an area consisting of old building ruins west of Brewers Bay. Miss Andrews was found safe but somewhat dehydrated and was taken to the Roy Lester Schneider Hospital for treatment and observation. St. Thomas Police Chief Darren Foy extends his sincere thanks to everyone involved. On Thursday at 4, 8 p.m., officers were notified of an auto collision on Rapoon Hill. Police say a safari bus was traveling downhill in the area of the Wheatley Shopping Center. The operator lost control of the vehicle, veered towards the left and collided into a utility pole causing several passengers of the vehicle to be thrown forward. Those injured were transported to the Schneider Hospital via ambulance, police unit, and personal vehicles. The driver, Myron Donovan, was found to be negligent, according to the VIPD, for operating a defective equipment and failure to operate his vehicle in a safe and prudent manner after an inspection of the brakes found that they were inoperable. 60-year-old Dale George was cited with negligent driving for his failure to operate his vehicle in a safe and prudent manner by making an improper turn. On Friday, October 9th at 9 p.m., officers say the operator of a motorcycle was traveling west on the Weymouth Rymer Highway and was struck by George's vehicle. He failed to yield the right of way to oncoming traffic and made an improper right turn. As the motorcycle was struck, the operator was airborne and slammed into the pavement. 
The 20-year-old motorcyclist was taken into emergency surgery at Schneider Hospital for a broken right femur, broken left tibia, concussion to the head, and several lacerations. Well, last Friday, 25-year-old Kamoy Francis pleaded guilty in district court on St. Croix to transmission of threat to injure. On January 28, 2014, according to do court documents, a testifying witness in a murder case in the Superior Court in St. Croix received th two threatening messages. The threats were sent from a mobile device to a Facebook account and warned that if any of the defendants were found guilty, the witness and members of the witness's family would be killed. On February 5, 2014, BOC officers searched Francis' cell at Golden Grove and he was found in possession of the cell phone from which the threats were made. He faces a maximum sentence of five years in prison and $250,000 fine. Keeping our eye on the economy, the plunge in the stock market and weaker growth in the U.S. and abroad look to have taken a toll on American economic optimism. The CNBC All-America Economic Survey finds views on the current state of the economy about stable, with 23% saying it is good or excellent, and 42% judging it as fair. About a third say the economy is poor, up three points from the June survey. But the percentage of Americans who believe the economy will get worse rose six points to 32 percent, the highest level since the government shut down in 2013. Well, here's the New York Stock Exchange with our stock market watch. As we can see everything up there, the Dow 47, NASDAQ 8, S&P 500 2. Coming up on News 2, the VI goes Hollywood as the long-awaited premiere of the movie Timeless, A Love Story, was unveiled at the Reichel Center for the Arts Saturday night. Highlights coming up. Welcome back. St. Croix physician Dr. Albert Titus is filing a wrongful termination lawsuit against the Wallaby Hospital. Titus was left, let go by the hospital almost two years ago. His camp contended that Titus's competitors put out false and inaccurate accusations against him and knowingly sought to destroy his reputation. According to Titus, the termination was done through due process and was not in accordance with Juan Louis Hospital's medical staff bylaws. Other parties were also named in the lawsuit, including Juan F. Louis CEO Kendall Griffith and Anthony Ricketts, who recently resigned from the Juan F. Louis board. Marvin L. Pickering, the director of the Virgin Islands Bureau of Internal Revenue, reminds taxpayers who applied for the six-month automatic extension of the time to file their income tax returns that that deadline to find the return is Thursday, October 15, 2015. Taxpayers who cannot afford to pay the tax due at this time are encouraged to file the tax return by that deadline to avoid the imposition of the failure to file penalty, which is 5% per month. Taxpayers unable to pay the tax due in full are urged to proceed to set up a payment plan. You can call the office for more information. Senator Gene Ford, who is the chairman of the Senate Committee on Education, said he was very pleased to learn that an amendment that he spearheaded, which requires the hiring of maintenance workers in the territory's public schools and appropriates $750,000 for school maintenance personnel, has been signed into law. Ford said that the legislation, which was attached to the executive budget, will do much to address some of the long-standing maintenance problems in the schools and noted that a Department of Interior Assessments of VI Public Schools found that the schools have suffered from more than $66 million of deferred maintenance. The Virgin Isles Department of Education, meanwhile, the Office of the Insula Superintendent of St. Thomas St. John District, they hosted the fourth annual Education Expo at Tutu Park Mall on Saturday. The event, described as a celebration of student achievements in academics, the arts, sports, and more, included eight of the 14 schools in the district, as well as community groups, musical and dance performances. They were all presented by BCB, Gomez Elementary School's Pantomime Group, 
Eudora Ken High School's Music Styles and E. Benjamin Oliver Elementary School's award-winning Steel Owls. There was also a parade led by Charlotte Mali High School's JROTC Color Guard. Fifteen boxes of books were given away and door prizes were also raffled. Well, the VI goes Hollywood as the long-awaited premiere of the movie Timeless, A Love Story, was unveiled at the Reichel Center for the Arts Saturday night. It was the first time the film, the brainchild of writer-director Ed Laborde and executive director, executive producer, rather, David Edgecombe, was viewed by the public. And here's some reaction from cast and moviegoers. That's a tough call. That's a tough call. From the, the narrator, the storyteller, the auntie, her voice just captivated me from the beginning, and then the music. And then I don't know her, her name in the movie, but Monet's character, I loved her character. I thought she was just so realistic, so real. I really did. It was wonderful. Clearly a labor of love, and you can tell his love for his home, his wife, the Virgin Islands. It was wonderful. We have a product that we can put out and represent the entire Virgin Islands. Something that was locally made, locally directed, produced. It means a lot, and it feels really good that we can say that this is our own. And be sure to tune in. We'll have more on the premiere on Tuesday's newscast. Well, speaking of timeless, a huge birthday celebration was held for Edna Carty. Edna turned 100. Carty was born on October 10, 1915 on the island of St. Kitts, the eighth of nine children born to John and Mary Queeley. She attended the Trinity School in Palmetto Point. After leaving school, she became a homemaker which enabled her to assist her parents in providing for her siblings. In 1940, she met and married the man of her dreams. Alcide Vincent Carty, he's deceased. They parented 11 children, Edwin Ralph Darkey, Calvin Eleonora, deceased, Nola Rosetta Dolly, Slador Glenville, who's also deceased, Terence Terry Marvin Boy, Carlene and stepson, Alexandra. Now, during the 60s, she cared for her mother who passed away in 1973 at the age of 93. Happy birthday to you. Be sure to stick around. Your news to AccuWeather forecast is coming up next.